Uh, we're joined by Dean Brennan ahead of tomorrow night's FA Cup second round replay here at the Hive Stadium against Newport County. Dean, thank you for your time. Just starting off with uh, Saturday's FA Trophy game, a uh, fantastic team performance, a 4-0 win over Maidstone, who just came off the back of beating League Two Barrow in the FA Cup. That must give you and the players a well-needed boost of confidence going into the game tomorrow night. Yeah, I think the run of form we were on November wasn't good. Um, and to stop the rot away at Newport was very important to, to draw there and not get beat. Obviously, that gives us the replay tomorrow night. Um, and our top performance Saturday was back to the, the standards we set ourselves for 90% of the season. So it was a really tricky tie against Maidstone. Obviously, they come in in fine form, second in their division. Like I say, they're in the third round of the FA Cup already. They were playing Port Vale, Stevenage. Um, and I thought we dispatched them really well. Um, I thought our level of performance was excellent. And uh, we scored some great goals. Newport County haven't had the best of seasons so far. Does league form go out the window when it comes to games like this? I think they're having a good season, I have to be honest with you. If you look at their budget and, what, and, and what's in that division, you know, some of the sides at the top of us, Stockport, Wrexham, not Counties, I think uh, Graham's doing a fantastic job on, on, on a lower budget for the level. Uh, they're away from relegation at the minute. I suppose a good distraction for them, the FA Cup as well. Um, they had a great win a few weeks ago against Stockport. I watched them live at Morecambe a few weeks ago, and obviously at Tramway at the weekend, the game was tight. So... It, from our point of view, it is a good distraction away from the league campaign, but um, it's a game that's 50-50, and I felt that when we went up there as well. I think it's a 50-50 game, and you need to earn the look in the cup. Uh, and it has a lot of magic, I suppose. That's why the cameras are here for this game. And just on that, you said you felt we should have won at Rodney Parade or could have won at Rodney Parade. When you look at the stats, 16 corners versus one from Newport, 63% of the possession with Barnett. How much do you take from that going into tomorrow night? Yeah, that means the game plan worked. Um, the last bit, the, the key bit, is both boxes. Obviously, keeping it out of your goal and scoring in the opposition's goal. So, tactically, I thought we were excellent on the day. Um, and to be fair to us, in big moments, we didn't take our chances. Um, I don't think we'll have as much joy. I think they'll come after us a little bit more Newport than what they did at, uh, over at their place. But uh, from a manager's point of view and a coaching point of view, I can only take the players to the water. They have to drink it. Um, so that's the bit that everyone's got to get right. And you even see the top sides, Man City at the minute, dominating possession in different games and, and not winning games of football. So it can happen at every level. Um, once we stick to our philosophy, our beliefs, once we stay composed, show bravery, show courage, availability for the ball, that's what we're all about at our football club. Newport County are a very physical side. Lots of threats, the likes of Omar Bogle, Shane McLaughlin and Will Evans, to name a few. What do you have to do to eliminate those threats, or is it just a case of playing the way you know you can play? I think tactically, we, we don't want to give away any any defensive well, defensive restarts. They're very strong physically from restarts, really well organised. They've got several drills. Um, I think we gave away one corner down there. Um, in the league this year, we played solely on Oldham and never conceded a corner. That was It is a tactic of ours to not give away set pieces. Um, I wouldn't say we're the most physical side, but we're very athletic, we've got a lot of pace, we're very dynamic. Uh, we've got really good technical players, so the plan for us is to make sure we don't give away any silly fouls. We stay composed in our defending, and then when we do have to deal with them scenarios uh, defensively in our box, we've got to be able to handle it. The squad feels very settled now, third in the league, through to the next round of the FA Trophy, and hopefully a win tomorrow night to take Barnet through to the third round where Eastleigh awaits. Do you feel you're in a good place? Yeah, we've had a brilliant season so far. Long way to go, still four or five months to go. We're not even at Christmas yet, but. I've enjoyed it so much this year. Um, there is more pressure on us this year because where we got to last year, and I think we've stepped up to that pressure. Um, from our point of view, that 42 points from, uh, from 22 games is really good. We're really happy with that. I think it's 22 games. Uh, to get through in the next round of the trophy, which is very important to us, a competition I take seriously. We got to the semis of that last year. We want to do better than that again. And obviously now to have an opportunity, a home toy, uh, in a replay, live on the telly, on ITV, it'll be a, it's a great opportunity for us. But I do believe this is a 50-50 game. I'm very cautious of the game. I'm very respectful of the opposition. We can't just turn up. We've got, we're going to have to get to the standards we've set for the majority of the season. And if we do that, we'll give ourselves a great chance of going through. As you said, a big occasion tomorrow night, playing at home under the lights and in front of the live ITV cameras. How much are you looking forward to this one? Yeah, this is what it's about, isn't it? This is what we all want. Everybody wants to be doing things like I'm doing right now. Every manager wants that. Um, and from the football school point of view, when I took over, I was in a really bad place 26 months ago. And um, we've managed now to be on several live games this year on television. I think we've got more to come in the new year, more on, on, on uh, Boxing Day, St. Stephen's Day, as we say in Ireland. Um, so, yeah, so look, this is what happens when you do well and you win football matches, you know, and people come to watch you play. So, our players have got to take a lot of uh, credit out of that. But 
we know it's a long season. It's so important I keep the, everyone's feet firmly on the ground, especially inside the changing room, and we continue to take it one game at a time. You always say you need a little bit of luck in the cup. Do you think Lady Luck will be smiling on the bees come tomorrow night? We hope we have a bit of Irish luck. I know their manager's Irish as well, but I hope we have a little bit of Irish luck. Um, look, you've got to earn luck in the cup. Um, we see it so many times. You see, it, this is where the cameras are here. Everyone's looking for a National League side to be a League Two side. So it's a bit, everyone wants, the cup's about joint killing, isn't it? And there's the magic of it, the history of it's amazing. It's the best cup competition in, uh, in the world, in my opinion. Um, there's nothing like it. And uh, we're hoping that we can, uh, we can, we can win tomorrow night. Thanks, Dean. Good luck. Cheers. Stores. You got more for me? Yes. Dean, magic of the cup, like you say. We've, we've seen Aldershot and Alfreton take League 2 sides to replays. We've seen Chester, uh, Chesterfield and East League take out League 1 sides. Maidstone, who we beat on Saturday, beat Barrow. FA Cup is just the greatest competition. Yeah, it, it's exciting, isn't it? I think everyone's excited. Um, the players are excited. Uh, I was talking to the chairman yesterday. He's excited. But the biggest thing with these kind of opportunities that we've created for ourselves, we've created this opportunity, we've got to grab it with both hands and we have to have no regrets. So, like I say, you will need a little bit of luck at times. We need our goalie to make a couple of saves when he has to. Um, and when our opportunities come along, hopefully we can take them. When you see the amount of non-league sides challenging football league sides, do you think that the argument for free promotion spots in National League should come up a bit more? Yeah, it won't happen though. <laughs> I'm afraid it's, it has to be voted in by the League Two sides, and they're not going to do that. They're not going to give away all the, the money they get at that level compared to the money we get in the National League. So I'm afraid it's never going to happen um, unless somebody can over can override it, the FA or whoever else. I don't know exactly how it works, but for, from if you look at if you look at every team that have been promoted out of the National League, they've never gone down the next season. Um, if you look at the teams that are up in the top of of, of League One, uh, sorry, League Two at this moment in time, they're Wrexham. So we know they've got a colossal budget and a great manager and a great team. You've got Notts County, you've got Barrow, who come out of the National League not too long ago. I think they're toward winning that division. So it just shows you there's not a lot within the divisions, I don't believe, personally, especially the top sort of 12 in air division. I think they'll all do fine in, in, in League Two, to be honest with you. And obviously, tomorrow's FA Cup game is on ITV. It's a great advert for the club. Uh, many people are probably seeing their first final game of the year. How do you think that's going to look for the club? Yeah, it's great. It's brilliant. It's uh, this is what it's all about, isn't it? You know, we want uh, we want the notoriety when you win football matches. This is what happens, um, and obviously we can hopefully we can cause a joint killing. Um, I, I, like I said earlier, I think it's a 50-50 game. It's going to be a difficult game because the way they play, it's a contrast in styles. Um, you've got a team that are very defensive, very well organised, very physical. And then you've got a team like ourselves who are quite free flowing, uh, try to overload in wide areas. We've got a lot of pace, got a lot of goal, a lot of ability. So it's different contrast. Let's see how we get on with that. But from a, from a club's point of view, this is brilliant. This is what it's all about. It hasn't happened to a football club for a while, this kind of thing. So I'm proud of, of that I'm leading the team to, to sort of these kind of games and I'm proud of the players and everyone at the football club. So hopefully we can get ourselves into the tour round. Um, compared to the National League and the FA Cup, you can have seven players on a bench, make five subs. As a manager going into these FA Cup games, how much more freedom can you do when you're planning your team? What changes you can make during a game? Yeah, it's, it's, it's brilliant. But we should just follow the Premier League. I don't know why we don't. I don't understand that in their, in their division. But yeah, it makes a huge difference. Um, it gives you way more options. Um, and so, look, as well, as well as the volume of games, we talk about player welfare. You know, I think the PFA did a, a big survey there four weeks ago. I come through on, on, on an email I got off them, basically about player welfare. Um, and being a member of the PFA myself and being an ex-player, I don't know why it doesn't happen at air division. No one seems to think about player welfare at air division. I think we've already played, I don't know what it is, 20 odd games. Last year we played 64 games. I think this year what it looks like at this moment in time we're going to be well into the 50s. So, you know, it has to be considered for air division as well. Um, so I don't understand. We did get an email off the National League there about, uh, about 10 weeks ago asking us manage, all the managers asking us uh, do we do we uh, it was a vote basically do we want seven uh, five from seven and I think every manager in the division wants that and I don't know if they can change it in season but hopefully they can that'll help our players welfare because there's loads of injuries out there I speak to all the managers in their division and managers in the league above there's so many injuries going on you see it in the Premier League at the minute there's so many injuries in that division as well so um, yeah I think it's something that has to happen at a level. Just to highlight one of your players, Danny Collins, you mentioned in your post-match interview on Saturday that he's a future captain for this football club. He's obviously centre-back, great defender, but also contributing so many goals up front. He's got seven for the season. What's it like having a player like Danny in the group? The great thing about Danny is he walks on his game every day. He lives and breathes the game. Uh, he's a tactician himself. He thinks like a manager. 
He's he's so uh, he's so easy to manage. He's low maintenance, which is the best for any manager. Um, but people have to remember this is only Danny's third full season in, fo in men's football. He had one season at Dover, um, and then the last season with us, and this is his third season. So, but what I like about Danny is is um, he'll go away, think about his game individually, looks at his own clips, he walks on his game every day. You see him out there walking on his head and. Something we spoke about a long time, I watched videos with him, how he could do better attacking the ball. And John Dreyer was here, he helped him a lot with that as well. So when he was assistant manager, because he's an ex-defender. So, so people like Danny deserve the credit. They deserve the pat on the back they're getting at the minute. And uh, he's going to go on to bigger and better things, in my opinion. Good, thank you.